It seems like the labor pains have started. As a first time mom, I was filled with anxiety. Being far from my hometown, a trip back for childbirth was out of the question. However, my in-law's house is only about a 10 minute walk away. With a good relationship with my in-laws, I planned to rely on them if anything happened as I prepared for childbirth. My due date was yesterday. Just as my husband left for work and it was conceivable that I could give birth at any time, something that felt like labor pains began. I just arrived at work. It's not like the baby will be born right away. Let me know if anything changes. Despite my anxieties, my husband seemed indifferent. Looking back, I realized that his behavior had been strange for some time. My name is Ellie. I quit my job when I found out I was pregnant and am now a 32-year-old full-time housewife. My husband, George, is two years older and was a senior at the university I attended. We reunited at a university club gathering three years ago and hit it off. Considering our age, we decided to get married soon after. I was happy to be able to get married while still in my late 20s. George's job is demanding, and he often comes home late or has to work on his off days, which only adds to my anxieties. But my mother-in-law occasionally checks on me, and she was a great help when my morning sickness was severe. She's looking forward to the birth of her grandchild, and for her sake as well, I want to deliver a healthy baby. My father-in-law has also driven me to the hospital a few times. I've been blessed with wonderful in-laws. And then there was yesterday, my due date. Seeing no changes in my condition made me anxious. It's the due date, but the baby hasn't come out yet, huh? When I voiced my worries to George before he left for work, he became irritated as he hurriedly prepared to leave. If the labor pains haven't started, it means it's not time yet. There's no point in overthinking it. The baby will come out when it's ready. He left for work after saying this indifferently. It's not that I wanted him to do anything in particular. I just wanted him to understand and empathize with my anxious feelings. We've argued about this several times during my pregnancy. George always says, there's no point in overthinking. Things will work out. Does worrying achieve anything? Maybe he's right, but giving birth is a matter of life and death. He was indifferent when my morning sickness was severe and when I had painful contractions. When we found out I was pregnant, he was so happy. What happened? I'm going to be a dad. I remember how delighted he was when we went shopping for baby supplies together. But slowly, his attitude changed. And by the time I reached the stable period of my pregnancy, he had become noticeably cold. Maybe it was because work was particularly busy at the time. But I wished he would listen more, show more concern. With these feelings, I've made it to today. Even today, a day past the due date, George left for work with his usual expression. Despite my frustrations, I prioritized the baby in my belly and managed to see George off with a normal expression. And about an hour later, that's when what seems like labor pains began. I tried calling the hospital, but they told me to wait and see since my contractions were still far apart. I prepared my hospital bag and rested, waiting for the time to come. By the afternoon, my contractions were getting closer together, and so I called a taxi and went to the hospital. I tried to call George, but he didn't answer, so I sent him an email and admitted myself to the hospital right away. I couldn't rely on my in-laws either, as they were at work. From that point on, all I remember is enduring the intense pain. The pain was excruciating, and I felt alone and anxious. I felt like I was going to pass out from the pain several times. George finally arrived at the hospital in the evening. And to make things worse, he seemed to have had some alcohol. Really? Today of all days? Even after I told him I was in labor? He excused himself saying, I had a sudden drinking party, but I only had one beer. He seemed proud, almost as if he thought not having more than one beer was something commendable. This drove me mad. What? Even one beer is still drinking. You reek of alcohol. Don't come into my room like this. Get out. Between the bellyache and the smell of alcohol, I didn't even know what I was saying anymore. At that point, a nurse who came to check on me kicked George out and I was left alone once again. I spent a restless night and before I knew it, it was morning. It seems like the baby will be born soon. After moving to the delivery room and waiting for a while, George, who seemed to have sobered up by then, came in. What does he want now? I wanted to say that, but I didn't even have the energy to speak. Finally, my son was born safely. Despite nearly passing out from the pain, I felt relieved when I saw my son crying healthily. When the nurse handed my son to George, he hesitated but eventually held him. I was vaguely thinking, so he's a dad now, when George made an outrageous remark. He doesn't look like me at all. Whose kid is this? Saying that, he pushed our son back to the nurse. What? I didn't understand what was happening and glared at George. Get out! 
Even though I didn't want to speak because of the pain, I told George succinctly, and he left the room without a word. What is he thinking? Could such a thing happen? I didn't have the energy to worry about what had happened to George, and I was just furious. My son was taken to the nursery, and I was taken to my room, but I couldn't rest because I was too angry. Still, because I was so exhausted, I fell asleep without realizing it. Taking care of my son kept me busy every day, and my five-day hospital stay flew by. George came to see our son and me from time to time, but because we were in separate rooms, we only spent a few minutes together. My mother-in-law accompanied me when I was discharged, but George apparently went to work. My mother-in-law, who seemed oblivious to George's antics, adored and cared for our son, telling how cute my baby boy is all the time. My father-in-law, who had left work early, also came to our house. He and my mother-in-law looked after our son, so I was able to rest a bit. I was truly grateful to my in-laws. In the evening, as my mother-in-law was preparing dinner, George came home. Welcome back. I greeted him, but he was cold and unresponsive. As soon as he entered the living room, he pulled an envelope out of his bag. Without even holding our son, he smirked and called me over. Ellie, I have something to talk about. I was annoyed by his attitude, but what happened next was even more unbelievable. George took out some documents from the envelope and thrust them in my face. I had it tested. It's not my child, so we're getting a divorce. This proves your affair. What? I couldn't help but let out a strange sound, and my mother-in-law's hand stopped as she was cooking. My father-in-law, who was holding our son, froze and looked at George. Despite the three of us being dumbfounded, George had a smug look on his face. When he was born, I thought he didn't look like me at all, so I secretly had a DNA test done. And? I sighed and prompted him to continue. So, look at this. The document he showed me had some complicated words and numbers, but I read aloud the sentence that caught my eye. The tested individual cannot be excluded as the biological father. George snorted confidently. Excluded means I'm not the father, right? What? Zero reading comprehension? I calmly retorted. If he's not excluded, it means you are the father. Then George started to panic. What? No way. I remembered what happened during the birth and became angry again. So, you said all those things back then because you suspected me of cheating? I clearly remember George saying, Whose kid is this? when he saw our newborn son. I said it in front of my in-laws. They were furious. George, how could you? What were you thinking, doing that to Ellie when she was going through so much? As George was scolded by his parents, he started to make excuses. Well, Ellie's workplace was full of men and she often went to drinking parties. There were days when she came home late, so of course I'd be worried. I started to get annoyed with George, who was glancing at me as he spoke. Look, I reported every drinking party, and you even picked me up when I was going to be late, remember? And still you suspected me? But George still laughed as if he was right. Well, you know, I've seen stories on the internet about people raising their affair partner's child, right? When I was talking to a coworker, they said I should have a DNA test done. Oh, I see. There might be no point in talking to this man. Really? You took the word of the internet and some stranger over me? You trusted the stories of people you don't even know instead of me? My anger wouldn't subside. I struggled with morning sickness and went through a tough labor just to give birth to a healthy child for you, George. And this is what you were thinking? My mother-in-law broke down in tears and my father-in-law was furious. I can't believe this! As I angrily slapped the documents out of George's hand, he tried to pick them up but dropped his bag and something unexpected fell out. I couldn't believe my eyes. What's this? There was a divorce form in George's bag. Are you planning to divorce? Suddenly, George lost all his earlier momentum and became flustered. No, this isn't, I mean. I found myself no longer able to tolerate his attitude. You've gone to the trouble of preparing divorce papers and now you're telling me you don't want a divorce? I snatched the divorce papers, clutching a pen tightly. My husband tried to stop me, but in that moment, his smartphone rang. It was the sound of an incoming email. My hand, clutching the pen, stopped. I had a bad feeling about this. When did his behavior and words start to seem strange? It had been weird since summer, after spring had passed. What is this unease? On impulse, I snatched my husband's phone. Holding back my husband, who was trying to retrieve it in a panic, I unlocked the screen. Displayed, there was something unbelievable. I read it out loud. Have you filled out the divorce papers yet? It wasn't your child anyway, right? Claim alimony from your wife and let's go on a lavish trip. What's this? My bad feeling turned out to be true. 
I thought it was strange. You suddenly accused me of cheating, and I wondered where that idea came from. Could it be because you were the one cheating? That's it, isn't it? That's why you thought I was cheating too. My husband's face turned pale. Who is this woman? Could it be from a new employee or something? You must have become the person in charge of the new employees this spring and got close to her, right? That makes sense. Your behavior started to change because you were cheating with her. That's why you were coming home late and claiming to work on holidays, probably just going on dates, right? I spoke calmly about what I had been thinking. Seeing that my husband didn't say anything back, it seemed that I wasn't far off the mark. My father-in-law, hearing this, was furious again. Is this true? As my husband averted his gaze, my father-in-law's fist hit him in the face. My father-in-law bowed deeply to me. Ellie, I'm truly sorry for my stupid son. My husband was also made to bow alongside his father and was interrogated. You should be the one apologizing. Tell the whole truth. The woman my husband had cheated with was close to what I had guessed. She was a younger woman who had transferred from another branch, and my husband, who was in charge of her training, seemed to have developed the affair. Moreover, it seems she was also married, although she didn't have a child. I was flabbergasted and quickly filled out the divorce papers. I thrust them back at my husband. Write it down quickly. Ellie, I'm sorry, please reconsider. I admit my mistakes. I could only look at my apologetic husband with cold eyes. No way. I don't need someone who won't be there for me when I'm hurting the most. I don't want to see your face anymore. You thought our son wasn't yours, so you don't have to see him again. Well, I will take child support though. Prompted by my father-in-law, my husband filled out the divorce papers. When my father-in-law is a witness, we discussed alimony and child support. While all this was happening, my mother-in-law, who had taken my son somewhere, returned. She silently handed something to my husband. A confused George took it and opened it to find an old photo album. In it was a picture of a baby who looked just like our son now. It looks just like him. There's no way he's not your child. My mother-in-law coldly dropped the bomb. Pictures from the time when George was born, he looks just like our son. Seeing that, George was utterly shocked. But he doesn't look anything like me. He started to make excuses. At that point, I lost my patience. If a newborn baby looked exactly like you as an adult, wouldn't that be scary? Didn't you realize that? Looking at that photo, it's undoubtedly your child. No, it's not that, it's just... Everyone kept saying it. I believed it from the beginning. Liar, if you believed it, you wouldn't have insisted on a DNA test. Always blaming others, take some responsibility for your actions. You were neglecting your pregnant wife and having an affair. That's a fact, it doesn't change. Moreover, you were swayed by your mistress, doubted your wife, and even did a DNA test with your newborn son. Is there any sincerity in any of these actions? None, right? While I was suffering, you were having an affair. I am not so generous to forgive someone like that. I launched into him without even taking a breath. George kept apologizing, but of course, I didn't forgive him. We ended up getting a divorce. Rumors about George's affair spread at work, making his job difficult and causing him to make mistake after mistake. As a result, he was transferred to a different branch in Nebraska. I thought about moving back to my parents' house, but considering it's not good to travel long distances postpartum, I've been living in George's now empty family home and my son is growing up healthy. George was severely scolded by his parents and he has been using his savings to pay alimony. Under the watchful eye of his father-in-law, he pays the alimony every month. Of course, we've also sought damages from the woman he had the affair with. Thanks to that, her husband found out about the affair, which was a double betrayal, and they ended up divorcing. I heard she's now working at a bar. George was a foolish husband, but I'm grateful for the supportive in-laws who are there to watch our son grow up with me. I am very satisfied.